Hello there. Welcome back to The Groomsman. I'll be your host, Jonathan. Today I'm using Emperor Oud by Hendrix Classics. It's, um, yeah, Emperor Oud. I don't know what I was going to say about it, but it's my favorite scent in all of my wet shaving experience. This is a dupe of Tom Ford's Oud Wood. I've not smelled the original Tom Ford before, but man, I love this. I love this scent. Very dark, very woody, very resinous. It's so nice. Um, very, you know, oud. It's not, I don't know. I don't I don't have a whole lot of oudy stuff. Um, it's a tree resin. Uh, it can get kind of stinky in some stuff and some perfumes. Maybe a little bit of that here, but I mean, I think it just smells so great. It's, it's not the only tree resin in that scent, uh, but Tom Ford oud wood is the, the EDP behind that scent. And it smells fantastic. I got it all whipped up here with my Made Right brush, uh, my vintage Made Right with a Bodhi Knot. And I'm gonna get right to it. I already got some pre-shave loaded, the Vetiver and Vanilla Badger pre-shave oil, which I've been using for a little bit here. Uh, this is the same base uh, HCNC's had for a little while now. I don't know that he's got a name for this base, or if he does, I don't know what it is. I know we've been working on a new base, um, they thought it got released uh, for his last scent release was like watermelon um, but then it ended up not happening not sure why um, there was a conversation I had with some other guys on Facebook about it and uh, I think they you know the owner of the HCNC posted about it he said it wasn't ready you will probably release it soon um, at least for the unscented version, he's not sure if he'll change everything to that base. I think it didn't quite go the way he wanted. The impression I got overall was I don't anticipate seeing a new base uh, from HCNC in the immediate future. I know we've been working on it, but has it come to fruition? I'm not sure what his goals were. Maybe he didn't meet those goals. God, if you didn't notice before I started lathering up, like five days ish of uh, growth here going on. I think I shaved maybe last Wednesday and I had off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Had a nice long weekend. I took my son out camping. I had a nice little drive up to the border and uh, some hiking, did some fishing, made some fires. It was good times. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. All right, for the race today, the Ellsworth Copper Cant, Copper Cant, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. All brass, this is the plus version. Um, just came out not too long ago, a week or two ago. You can uh, maybe see up here at the top and down here at the bottom, there's a small plus mark, denotes the plus plate. It's a slightly larger blade gap. The original plate has, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Neutral blade exposure. And this is listed as positive blade exposure. I don't memorize those measurements, um, but I'll put a link to the bottom where I'll copy and paste the the stuff and put it down in the description. I've got it loaded up with a brand new first use um, Gillette Seven O'clock Black Super Platinum. Definitely more blade fill than the original. Not sure how I feel about it yet. I will say I knew there was going to be more blade fill going from a neutral exposure to a positive exposure. I'll say I had expectations for more blade fill on the face, more efficient shave. Hey, this is mowing that down though. It's kind of impressive. I 
and it rinses super easy. It's got um, no bars on the corner here, so that lather just rinses out super easy. You can see it just slides right out. It's pretty, pretty clean. Uh, it does have slightly notched corners here. Um, not too dramatic, like say the Lupo, where it notches out all the way to the corner of the blade, but little notches there. I definitely feel it's definitely more efficient on that first pass. I don't know, we'll have to see at the end of the three passes how the, the BPS feels. So far while it has more blade feel, it's still very comfortable. I had a little bit of tugginess there at the, the very beginning, but it's a new blade and had a lot of hair growth, so that wasn't really surprising, but it smoothed out. And uh, that was a really, really good, really good first pass. I'm gonna lather up here again for the second pass. I think my my guess is if they get to the third pass and he gets the grain, which is where things kind of tell themselves, is that uh, I'm gonna like it. I think it's gonna be just. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of blade feel, right? I don't like, I tried to like the Blackbird. I've tried it multiple times, some of those razors. But most of the razors with a high blade feel, I don't like. I use my Rex Ambassador, but I use it on the lower setting, so there's not as much blade feel. Um, I think this razor is going to end up kind of just right on the edge of that blade feel tolerance that I have. <laughs> The imaginary line I drew in the sand. Any more, I think it would be uncomfortable. But as it is right now, I think it's positive, but it's not so much that it's gonna dissuade me from using it. It's not uncomfortable. It's very smooth. I know, um, Adam had some issues with the angle. I don't, I find it pretty intuitive. I mean, if you ride the cap too much, you're, you're gonna lose the blade. It's not, it's meant for a steeper angle. But the, you know, the, I feel like the angle was kind of built into the head. I don't really think about it, it just kind of naturally falls in there for me. But it is a slightly more steeper angle than a traditional 30 degrees or like something you would use with like the Overlander. Where you're more kind of riding the cap a little bit more than riding the guard per se. But I don't think it's difficult to find or difficult to maintain. It's, it's pretty intuitive. If you went the other way and you started like riding the cap, like you would notice it right away because you lose blade contact. You would feel it. So far, so good. No nicks, cuts, or scratches. Which is saying something, because I tend to 
make myself a lot. If you've been watching the channel, it's not uncommon for me to get a weeper or like Nick, a scar on my neck or something. Man, I love this scent. If you like dark woody scents, I definitely recommend this. If you don't like dark woody scents, then probably not. Um, but I love the, the Emperor Oud line. Um, I know H, or no, uh, Murphy McNeil makes a scent that's also listed as a homage to Tom Ford's Oud Wood. I could only find one re review on it. That was a video review, and he said he liked the scent, but it smelled nothing like Oud Wood. So I don't know if uh, he got a bad set or I mean I'm just not sure about how that kind of played out but it was, it was an interesting review so I've been tempted to try it in the past but because of that review which kind of sucks I guess I've been too gun shy to to try it out I know uh, I have some hope that Ariana Evans and on the club if you have the club membership, which I do, I think it's pretty reasonably priced, and I get a good discount. I don't buy every month, um, maybe like every few months or every four months or so. I'll do like a fairly large order where I'll buy two or three sets and I mean EDP or whatever. And that kind of makes membership worth it. But then you have the ones the, the releases that are to club members only or early releases. And you kind of hear some of the news. Uh, but Peter from Ariana and Evans had talked about doing an Oodwood dupe, like a limited release. So I have uh, some high hopes for that. So far against the grain, super smooth. I actually expected to like it a little bit less. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, maybe just because I felt that I was like, oh, this is kind of played forward like more than I expected. Um, I think it was just because I had a lot of hair growth and after that first pass got knocked down, it's actually really smooth. The blade feel isn't that great. Um, a little bit more than the, the regular plate, yeah. But it's not. After I got past that first uh, pass with all that hair growth, it, you know, it's more like a normal day's pass, a normal day's shave. It felt really similar to the the original base plate. And I did get one little weeper. I spoke too soon. I got one little weeper. Um, I, man. <laughs> I, my cheeks are super smooth. I'm going to do a couple touch-ups. and I missed one little spot right here. I got a couple spots on my neck that I normally touch up. Um, but I'll do those quick touch-ups and a cold water splash, close up that little, that one little weeper I got because I, I spoke too soon. And then I'll be back for my final thoughts on the Copper Cant Plus Plate and I'll do some aftershave stuff. Alright, I'm back. Thanks for sticking with me. Had a couple of touch-ups and a cold water splash. I did have two nicks. I had one right here, one right here, both on my chin. I kind of tend to catch little bumps on my chin on my against the grain pads. So close to a perfect shave. Uh, but other than that, very, very efficient. Um, I, surprisingly very efficient. I mean, I knew it was going to be more efficient. I had more blade feel, uh, a little bit more positive exposure, so I'm going to get a little bit more cutting action there, but this is like really, really, really smooth. Um, so, slight amount of like irritation, like over shaving kind of a bit on my neck, but that was my own fault. Uh, something I don't normally get with a regular base plate, um, but something that I have no problem at all living with on the plus plate because it was so smooth. 
um, using the Emperor Oud Tiger Balm, Tiger Milk Aftershade Splash from HC and C's. Obviously, the Emperor Oud same matched scent. Uh, there's not a whole lot to his splashes. It's just alcohol and fragrance and polysorbate 80, which is uh, emulsifier, I believe. So mostly just alcohol and fragrance. Almost no burn at all. There's a slight stinging right here on my chin. That was it, not even on my neck. I thought I might get, you know, a little burn here on my neck. I felt like I got a little overshaded a little too much doing those touch-ups, but not the case. Oh man, that scent smells so good. The, he does go kind of high on the fragrance. If, uh, if you've ever looked at HCNC or if you plan to in the near future, his uh, fragrance levels are pretty high, comparatively speaking to a lot of other um, artisans his um aftershaves are edt level uh cologne like edt versus edp versus cologne i'll say it's aftershave and then cologne and then edt and then edp and then parfum and, uh, so this is a lot higher than most aftershave splashes uh, out there as far as the amount of of scent agent in there of, of the the scenting oils so it does make the scent a little bit, when you first put it on, it's a little bit stronger than the soap. Like the soap smells like perfectly matched. The aftershave sm smells a little bit, not overpowering, just very dense. Um, but once it's on your face, and, and I mean, it's been like, what, 10, 15 seconds, um, then it really opens out, it breathes. So that kind of really heaviness from that uh, that scent profile, it, it just kind of balances out. Same thing with the EDP, which I bought from them as well. Um, it's not really marked. Well, it's got Emperor Oud on the bottom there. I don't know if you care about that. But uh, this is the same. When you first spray it on, it's a little bit, a um, little tight on the, on the fragrance. It's very, it's not like strong. It's just the, the scent profile is a little sharp, I think is the word I'm looking for. Um, which then it doesn't quite match the soap because it's a little bit sharper than the soap. And the soap is very rounded. Um, but that goes away within a couple minutes as it kind of breathes. I think it's just the percentage of perfuming oils that he puts in there makes it that way. It's a little bit sharper, but it breathes out and works really well. And um, so I put the splash. The splash is nice. Uh, my face is a little tacky from that splash because it's, there's not a lot to it. It's just the alcohol and that polysorbate 20 and the fragrance. I think that was it, right? Yeah, that's it. Um, so my, my face does get a little tacky after using this splash. It feels super smooth though. But hey, I'm going to use their balm. I know I've been using the aftershave oils a lot recently. Uh, this is just their standard balm with the Emperor Oud scent. It comes in a cool little pump. Um, I just do one pump. I'm going to wipe the excess off there. It's pretty thick uh, when you first put it on your hands. It's like a almost kind of a lotion consistency, and I'm like, I remember when I first got it, I was like, oh no, because I'm, I'm like, this isn't gonna work for me. When I put really heavy kind of lotiony type balms on, it doesn't work well. Um, but I tried it. I just don't do anything once, right? Science, and it it absorbs in so quick. So yeah, it's a little thicker than a normal balm would be, but. I mean, you saw that, it was pretty quick. Comes on, like you first put it on and it's pretty heavy, pretty, you know, thick, like a sunscreen or a really heavy lotion, but I mean, it just blends right in. My skin feels just as soft as like, when I use some of those, uh, like post-shave oils that I like to use, like good oleo and stuff. I won't use the good oleo today. I think I'll be a little overkill on the moisturizer. The, uh, the balm is pretty, you know, stocked. Aloe, emulsifying wax, coconut oil, safflower oil, coconut butter, argan oil, sunflower oil, canola, fragrance, opifan plus, I'm not sure what that is, and colloidal oatmeal. So, it's got some, some, it's a heavy duty balm right there. Uh, it is, like I said, a little heavy, but I find it blends in really well. My skin feels really nice. I, I like it. I like the HCNC ball. My hands are all sticky right now. I'm gonna throw on some of that EDP here in a little bit. Um, but the plus plate really shined out today. This is the the star of the shave, the Copper Camp Plus. I'm really glad I picked it up. 
Um, they had some delays in shipping, but they're all in stock. I know I bought it directly from Aylesworth. I know TRC had some, but they sold out already. I'm not sure if they're restocking it anytime soon. Uh, you might just want to keep an eye on their site. Uh, so I already got some patina forming on my brass razor. Um, yeah, plus plate. If I was going to buy it again, knowing, like I me, mean, if I tried both of these from somebody else and then was going to buy it, I'd probably just buy the plus plate. Um, I do still like the minus plate. If you want a little less blade fill, go for that. Um, but for me, comparing the two, the the blade feel on the face felt so similar. Um, but I get a much more efficient shave with the with the plus plate than I do with the the regular plate. And I, I like the the extra efficiency, and I don't mind the the extra blade feel because it's not not a lot. I mean, the the differences in blade feel are pretty minuscule uh, for me, anyways. I'll probably do. I think I'm gonna do a a matchup. The Overlander versus the Copper Camp Plus Plate here in the near future. I think that'll be a good shave off there. Um, that's the shave. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you here next time. Let me know what you think of the video or if you've tried out the Plus Plate and your thoughts on it. Or if you want to see something else coming up in the near future, hit me up and let me know. If you'd like me to review a certain product, I'll see if I got it. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.